Okay, this video is environmental impacts of global flows at varying scales. Subtropics are localized pollution, including impacts on shipping lanes and carbon footprints for global food and global flows of food, goods, and people. So, localized pollution. So, we'll look at shipping lanes. So, the impacts of shipping lanes. Well, ships often use low grade fuel and crude oil bunker fuel when they are further out sea, which creates lots of pollution. Lots of engines burning hundreds of liters of water, too. Very dangerous release of nitrous oxide. More than cars going through a medium sized town. They run the engines at port, which can have adverse health effects on local populations. Container shipping also releases pollutants responsible for cancer and asthma. It's the worst form of pollution, um, as it's from a boat and also from chilling platforms. Um, solid waste from ships is also very dangerous, but they may also be, and they may also be coated with toxic substances. So both of these forms of pollution, so burning oil and solid waste, can result in deaths of local wildlife and damage crucial food chains in ecosystems through bioaccumulation and biomagnification. So the, 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 well, the difficulties um, of managing this issue of localized pollution is that companies refuse to be transparent. It's said to create more pollution than all the cars in the world. Most shipping industry firms use heavy fuel that contains a lot of pollutants that are high in sulfur, unlike cars. Most shipping industry and ships can cope with this heavy fuel, but it would typically clog up in like a car or any other type of vehicle. This type of fuel is also much cheaper, so it's widely used, which is not very good. International shipping does not fall any, under any international agreement, such as the Paris Agreement, so it's mostly unregulated. It's difficult to regulate the ships when they're offshore, distance regulations are difficult to mono, monitor, and dif it's difficult to enforce regulations. It can be costly to monitor ships at sea, especially in international waters. Now we're going to look at carbon footprints. So carbon footprints for food basically are the main greenhouse gases um, emitted during the production, transport, and consumption of food. It's become popular for certain brands to state the carbon footprint of their products through labeling such as corn, uh, the brand corn. And some supermarkets have tried this, but it can be very difficult to measure carbon footprint as it has to take into account every step in the con con production and consumption. Personal carbon footprint is the sum of all emissions of carbon dioxide which in, were induced by your activities in a given time frame. It's usually per year. So, um, overall, agriculture accounts for about 14% of the greenhouse gases globally, and the production of food plays a major role in enhancing the greenhouse effect. It's better than just food miles because it takes into account farming methods, transportation methods, fertilizers, packaging, preservation, how the food's cooked, and food waste. Meat, cheese, and eggs result in the highest emissions during production. Fruits, nuts, and vegetables have much lower emissions. That's because meat and dairy products require a lot of water, energy, and storage. And the animals also must be fed, which uses up even more energy by producing their feed too.